Hello friends, welcome back to our series on mastering parallel programming in C Sharp. Today, in part 7.2, we are unlocking a spin weight for high performance thread synchronization. So, before we get started, just a quick reminder to subscribe my channel, hit the red button, and don't forget to click on the little bell icon. That way, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, without any further delay, let's get started. Parallel programming using PFX, that is Parallel Framework Extension Libraries in C Sharp. If you have watched my previous videos, you probably remember this diagram. Well, today we'll go ahead one more step further and learn about a spin weight in detail, which is one of the spinning primitives. A spin weight for high performance thread synchronization. Okay, so let's first understand what a spin weight is. A spin weight helps write lock free code by spinning instead of blocking the thread like traditional locks. The spin weight spins first and then yields CPU when necessary to avoid resource waste. So here I have said two things, lock free code and instead of blocking, right? When I said lock free code, what does it mean? Normally, when multiple threads need access to a shared resources like a file or a piece of data, we use a lock to prevent other threads from using it until the current thread is done. So this blocks other threads from proceeding, which can slow down the program. The lock free code avoid this by not using lock, allowing threads to work without blocking each other. When I said spins rather than blocks, right? So it means that instead of stopping the thread and wait until it's allowed to be proceeded, spin weight spins by continuously checking the condition like asking are we ready yet? The thread stays active but doesn't take control of the CPU for long period of time. Okay, so let's understand it by the scenario. Let's imagine you are waiting for a friend to finish using a computer but there is no rule that only one person can check the computer. Instead of locking the door and blocking everyone else from checking, you just keep glancing at computer every few seconds. As soon as it's free, you can use it. So here, a spinning, it means you keep checking if the computer is free. Not blocking, you are not stopping anyone else from checking if it's free too. Okay, so now question arises, why do we need a spin weight? So, let's understand it. When multiple threads are working together, sometimes one thread needs to wait for another to complete a task before continuing. So one way to wait is by using a simple flag that the waiting thread keeps checking like this. So here what we are doing, here let's suppose this is the boolean variable underscore proceed and here let's suppose I am just making as a false to it, right? And in the check method, I am checking. If it is a true, then thread dot memory barrier is going to get executed. So, with the while loop, I am just going to keep checking the proceed variable when it becomes true then this statement is going to get executed so this works fine if the flag is changed quickly however if it takes too long like seconds and multiple threads are waiting this spinning behavior could use up to too much cpu power leaving other tasks running slower so this problem can get even worse on single core systems or virtual machine where it might block the very thread that needs to change the flag so this situation we termed as a priority inversion okay so now we understood what is the problem right so how does spin weight going to fix this the spin weight solves these problems in two key ways number one it limits the spinning time after a set number of spins it stops aggressively checking and gives up the cpu using methods like thread.yield or thread.sleep so other threads get a chance to run number two on a single core machine it knows to be extra cautious and yields more often to avoid blocking critical tasks now the fun part comes. How to use a spin weight? There are two ways to use a spin weight. Number one, simple spin weight using a spin until. Number two, flexible spin weight using a spin one. In simple spin weight, we can call the static method a spin until of a spin weight rock, which keeps checking a condition until it becomes true. If you see these examples over here, here, first line, I have written boolean underscore proceed. So this line declares a boolean variable called underscore proceed. A boolean value can hold only two values, true or false. Initially, underscore proceed will be false because no value has been assigned yet, right? Then I have defined a check method which return nothing. That's what I have mentioned void over here. Inside this check method, I have called this spin until the spin weight struct. That's what I have written a spin weight dot spin until. So this is a part of mechanism to wait or pause the program until a certain condition becomes true. It's like a loop that keeps checking something over and over again until it gets the result it needs. In this case, when underscore proceed becomes true. Then inside this, I have written lambda express, which is just a short way to define a function. So this function, what it does, it checks the value of underscore proceed. If underscore proceed is true, the weight will stop and the check method will move forward. If underscore proceed is false, the program will keep waiting and checking. That's how we implement spin weight via the simple way using a spin until. Now come to the flexible spin weight where I am going to use a spin once. So here also I am defining this boolean variable underscore proceed and this will be holding false value because I have not mentioned over here anything. Right? Then there is a test method. In test method, what I am doing, I am just going to create an instance of the spin weight struct. 
That's what I have written where spin weight is equal to new spin. And then I have used this while loop not underscore proceed red dot memory barrier spin weight dot spin once. So overall what I have done over here I have created manually a spin weight object and calls its spin once method in a loop. So this while loop it will keep running until underscore proceed becomes true. So second approach gives us the more flexibility. Now you must be thinking how does spin weight work internally right. So it does 10 aggressive spins before it starts yielding the CPU. During those spins, it uses very short wait times that gradually increase, giving the system predictable behavior without hogging the CPU. On a single core machine, it keeps the aggressive spinning and yields after every spin to avoid the priority inversion problem that we have mentioned when we implemented this thing, right? Now let's talk about the characteristics of a spin weight. Number one, spinning instead of block. The spin weight doesn't make the thread stop completely. Instead of waiting in a frozen State, it keeps checking if it can continue. So this way, it avoids the more time consuming process of putting a thread to sleep and waking it up. Number two characteristics of a spin weight is smart CPU use. What does it mean? It's designed to avoid wasting too much CPU power. A spin weight starts by checking frequently. But if the condition it's waiting for takes too long, it backs off and starts waiting longer between checks to save CPU resources. Number three, avoid full lock. Unlike a regular lock, which stops other threads from accessing shared resources, a spin weight doesn't lock anything. It just keep trying to move forward, making it faster and preventing bottlenecks. Number four, adapt to the environment. It's very, very important. A spin weight adapts its behavior based on the system. On a single core computer or let's say virtual machine, it knows to be more careful and yield more often so other threads can do their work without being targeted. Last not but the least, efficient for short weights. The spin weight is great for scenarios where a thread expects to wait only for a short period of time. It avoids the overhead of traditional locks which could slow things down for quick checks or a small weights. Finally, let's talk about when to use a spin weight. Number one scenario is short weights expect. So use a spin weight when you think the condition you are waiting for will be ready quickly within a few moments. It checks repeatedly and is faster than putting the thread to sleep and waking it up further. For example, let's say when a thread is waiting for a quick update for another thread, like a flag change in a high performance game loop. Right? Number two, lock free programming. So spin weight is useful in lock free algorithms where threads don't block each other with locks. What does it mean? Instead of waiting on a lock, they just keep retrying until they succeed, which can be faster when contention is low. Number three, low contention. It's ideal when there is a low contention. What is it meant by low contention over here? It means that few threads trying to do the same thing at the same time. So when only a few threads are involved, a spin weight works well because the chances of waiting for too long are small. For example, when one or two threads are sharing access to a resources like reading from a shared cache. Number four, avoid locks in high performance scenarios. The spin weight is good in high performance situation where locking a resource would slow things down. Locks introduce context switches which are more costly for CPU than just spinning for a short period of time. Right? For example, in real-time system like handling network packets where a speed is critical and waiting too long would hurt performance. So that situation we can go for a spin weight. Finally, one of the scenario is a small critical section. When the code that we are trying to access is very small, for example, like updating a single variable or let's say performing a quick calculation, the spin weight can avoid the overhead of traditional log which are more suited for larger complex operations. Okay, so let's switch to the Visual Studio and see how we can implement a spin weight for both the ways, simple spin weight and the flexible spin. Okay, so here we are on Visual Studio. Here we are going to see the demo of the simple spin weight. So for that, what I have done, I have created one console application named spin weight demo that has program.cs file. In program.cs file, first of all, I have added necessary namespaces like using system, system for threading. Please note that system.threading contains a spin weight structure. That's what we need to add these things. Then there is a class named program that has main method, which is an entry point of this application. At the class program level, I have defined a boolean variable named underscore proceed and assigned value to false. And finally, I have marked with a static queue so that this variable will be used throughout this program. So in main method, first of all, I am just printing this statement, simple spin weight demonstration because I'm just giving the demo of the spin weight over here of the simple one, right? So first of all, what I am doing, I'm just creating a new thread that will change underscore proceed value to true after three seconds. That's what I have inst instantiated a thread class and inside that, what I have done, I have just making thread to sleep for three seconds. That's what I have written thread dot sleep for 3000 because I just wanted to simulate some type of work, right? With the help of sleep, I'm just simulating some work. Then what I'm doing, I'm just assigning true value to 
proceed variable that's what i have written proceed underscore proceed is equal to true by this statement i'm making a signal to proceed and then finally i'm just printing this statement condition met proceeding and then i'm just printing this statement into console window waiting for condition so this statement will get printed and i have issued spin until a static method of a spin weight struct right that's what i have written a spin weight dot spin until inside that i have written this lambda expression. inside that i have written thread dot memory barrier and return underscore proceed so here main threads wait until underscore proceed becomes true and secondary thread changes underscore proceed to true after three seconds once it gets changed as it true then this statement is just going to get executed finally this task completed is going to get printed into this console so that's how this program is structured let me go and execute this program okay so finally output got appeared into this console window you see simple spin weight demonstration got printed and waiting for condition this statement got printed by main thread right that we have written over here line number 20 when underscore proceed value is assigned as a true value then this statement got executed right and that's what we are seeing this condition met proceeding and finally task completed got printed into this console that's how we implement simple spin weight using a spin until method okay so now let's see the flexible spin weight how we are going to use it right so first of all i have added necessary namespaces using system using system dot thread and then again there is a class name program and this underscore proceed boolean variable i have assigned value to false and i have marked this variable as a static so that it will be used throughout the program right then there is a main method which is an entry point of this application so here i'm first of all i'm just printing this statement flexible spin weight demonstration here also i'm just starting one new thread that will change underscore proceed variable to true after three seconds that's what i have written thread dot sleep 3000 so basically i'm just simulating some work over here via this statement and then making this variable to true that's what i have written underscore proceed is equal to true and finally i'm just printing this statement condition main proceeding and i'm just starting this thread so this is the usual way how we are going to create a thread and inside that what i have executing and then what i am doing as a part of flexible spin weight we need to create a instance of the spin weight class struct right that's what i have written where spin weight is equal to new spin weight then what i am going to do i am just going to print this statement waiting for condition and here i have written a loop and it will check when underscore proceed becomes true then this statement is just going to get executed right so what i am doing inside this while loop red dot memory barrier and spin weight dot spin once so this will spin a bit and then it is just yielding the cpu right that's what i have written spin weight dot spin finally i am just printing this statement console dot right line task completed and console dot read line so that's how this program is structured okay so let me go and execute this program to show the output how this flexible spin weight works right so let me go and execute this okay so output got appear into this console weight. flexible spin weight demonstration waiting for condition condition met proceeding and then finally task completed got so in this approach we manually control the spinning using a spin once it will spin for some iteration and if the condition still isn't met it will start yielding cpu to avoid wasting resources so now you have seen both the example simple spin weight and the flexible spin weight. so what is the key difference the key difference is a spin until which is used in the simple spin weight is more simpler and waits for condition to be true. whereas a spin once provides more control by spinning a set number of times and yielding cpu time if necessary so both examples by which i try to demonstrate how a spin weight can be used to wait for the condition efficiently without locking resource okay so that brings me to end up my session today to sum up today we learned what a spin weight is its characteristics when to use it and how to use it and we saw two ways by which we can implement a spin weight. That's all for this video guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share it with your friends and colleagues, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. Thanks for watching. See you next video.